Let's start right here. The widow of one of the men brutally murdered by ISIS executioners, Jihadi John, says she wants the terrorists captured alive. Dragana Haynes, wife of beheaded British aid worker, says she would not like the man who killed her husband to die an honorable death. Previously known as Jihadi John, the man pictured in ISIS videos of beheadings has now been identified as Mohammed Mwazi. foreign policy towards Islamic State. Because the jihadi John killer, who has featured in several Islamic State beheading videos, has been identified as Muhammad Mwazi, a Briton from a middle-class family who grew up in London and graduated from college with a degree in computer programming. In videos released by Islamic State, the masked black-clad militant brandishing a knife and speaking with an English accent appears to have carried out the beheadings of hostages including Americans and Britons. Reports say Mwazi is believed to have traveled to Syria around 2012 and to have later joined ISIS. In each beheading video he is dressed entirely in black, a balaclava covering all but his eyes and the ridge of his nose. He wears a holster under his left arm. This knife will not only slaughter Kenji. Hostages gave him the name John as he and other Britons had been nicknamed the Beatles. Another one was dubbed Judge. Reports say he was born in Kuwaiti, was raised in a middle class neighborhood in London, and occasionally prayed at a mosque in Greenwich, southeast London. So let the nightmare for Japan begin. Meanwhile, journalists guarded outside an address in the Queen's Park area of London on Thursday to ask neighbors if they knew a man called Muhammad Mwazi. One man who is Iraqi said he knew him. I'm shocked. I'm shocked because this is my, my neighbor, also is my same family. I'm also I'm Iraqi. This is Iraqi original. Uh, I know dad, I know mom, I know also the brother, sister. It's shocked for me. He's, he's done the job. What he thinks? He thinks it's jihad. No, it's not jihad. I'm, I'm telling him it's not jihad. You kill the people. It's jihad. No, it's not jihad. Sorry. The police have declined to comment on the report. Oh, well, it's not only the British police that have refused to comment. White House spokesman John, that's Josh Ernest, has also refused to confirm reports that the masked jihad in John killer is actually Mohammed Mwazi. The 26-year-old militant used the videos to threaten the West, admonish its uh, Arab allies, and taunt President Barack Obama and British Prime Minister David Cameron before petrified hostages cowering in orange jumpsuits. Well, uh, I have seen those uh, reports, and I know that there are um, some media outlets that are uh, uh, reporting that this suspect has been identified. Uh, what I can tell you is that the United States government continues to aggressively investigate the individuals uh, who are responsible for the murder of American citizens. Uh, and at this point, I'm not in a position to either confirm or deny that the individual named in these reports uh, is the individual that we're searching for. Um, but I can tell you that the United States commitment and the President's commitment to ensuring that we find and hold accountable the terrorists who are responsible for the murders of American citizens has never been stronger. Uh, and we will continue to work closely with our partners around the globe, including uh, the British government, to ensure that these terrorists are brought to justice. Well, a lot of people still believe that he is Mohammed Mwazi. Now, after the identity of jihadi uh, John was unmasked, the British security services have been severely criticized for allowing Mwazi to sleep through their net. But Prime Minister David Cameron is defending them. Mr. Cameron says the security services made incredibly difficult judgments on the UK's behalf. He, however, said that he will not comment on specific cases but he urged the public to support the security services. First of all, uh, when there are people anywhere in the world who commit appalling and heinous crimes against British citizens, we will do everything we can with the police, with the security services, with all that we have at our disposal to find these people and put them out of action. That is the number one priority for me. Second point, I work very closely with our security services. I meet with them regularly. I ask them searching questions about what they do. And in my almost five years' experience of Prime Minister, 
I think they are incredibly impressive, hardworking, dedicated, courageous and effective at protecting our country. All of the time they're having to make incredibly difficult judgments and I think basically they make very good judgments on our behalf. And I think while we're in the middle of this vast effort um, to make sure British citizens are safe, I think the most important thing is to get behind them. British Prime Minister David Cameron. Now, Mwaza's name was first disclosed by the Washington Post, citing unidentified former associates. The reporter who co-wrote the story revealing the identity of Jihadi John says the public has a right to know the killer's name. Um, the name um, was clear to U.S. intelligence agencies and British authorities by September um, uh, 2014. So only weeks after they had the name. It's widely known in the intelligence communities. So I was assembling uh, bits and pieces along the way. Um, and then we also relied on what we knew from the video and what we knew from hostages who had been with John and what they knew about John himself. And um, we assembled those pieces and eventually came up with a first name. And then we learned a uh, last name. And uh, it came to a head these, these last couple of weeks. And we sent uh, Suwad, who was, wrote the story with me, to, to London. And she started knocking on doors. And we found um, his close friends um, who talked to us. So we had the name before we reached, we reached the friends. And, um, they were just added confirmation of, of what we already knew and people we had talked to here. Now let's dig a little further on this matter. It will interest you to know that someone has come out to defend Jihad John or Mohammed Mwazi, as you would like to call him, as in Qureshi, the research director of Charity Cage, which worked with Mwazi since 2009, described him as a beautiful young man during a news conference in London. Now Cage blamed any radicalization by Mwazi on alleged harassment by counter-terrorism officials after it was detained in Tanzania with two friends in August 2009 when they arrived for a safari holiday of the charity which also worked with Michael Adebolajo, the Nigerian British Muslim convert who with an accomplice killed a British soldier in London in May 2013 said both men had been victims of undue pressure from the security services. This is why when, you know, when I'm asked, is the person that you see on those videos the same as the person you remember, Muhammad Amwazi, it's difficult for me to say that, yes, these two people are exactly the same. Because there's one character that I remember, one person, I remember, one young, kind person that I remember, and then I see that image, and there doesn't seem to be a correlation between the two. It's quite hard because, you know, he's such a, I'm pretty sorry. I didn't expect, uh, he's, he was such a beautiful young man, really. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to imagine the trajectory, but it's not a trajectory that's unfamiliar with us, for us. We've seen Michael Adebolajo, once again somebody that I met, you know, who came to me for help, looking to change the situation in the system. When are, when are we going to finally learn that when we treat people as if they're outsiders, they will inevitably feel like outsiders and they will look for belonging elsewhere.